If you're facing the misrepresentation error in your Merchant Center account, then this video is going to be very helpful for you. And let me explain you directly why. Because the misrepresentation issue is literally always coming unexpected when creating your Google Merchant Center account on the way to creating profitable Google Ads campaigns. If you're serious about your e-commerce store, then I would highly suggest to watch this video until the end. Today, I'm going to provide you with a live audit for the Merchant Center account as well as on the live website to find and fix potential issues that can unblock the Merchant Center misrepresentation error. I personally fix more than 300 Merchant Centers and in this video I'm going to give you all insights and important things to look at so you can unblock your account as soon as possible. Without further ado, let's dive right into my screen. So the first step is always to go over the homepage to see what kind of improvements we can make here. Uh, I see that the homepage is pretty basic as of right now. Uh, and the menu is a little bit messy, right? Because we need to understand why Google is displaying this error in the first place, right? The misrepresentation error means that you show something or that is missing something on your website that should be there. So anything in the layout or business information you need to find and fix. So while going over this homepage, uh, I noticed a few things. The header menu is a little bit messy, right? So I would make uh, it less messy by creating a drop-down menu or something like that or just simply uh, add less uh, things in the menu right here. And what was also interesting is that they use like a general image right here, like a stock image, pretty bad quality. So I would highly recommend to change this one as well. Uh, I checked the bottom here and it's working. So that's always good. Make sure to check all the buttons on your homepage as well while going over and fixing the misrepresentation issue. And when we scroll down a little bit, we see sort of like a cartoon image right here uh, that has something to do with hiking and a little bit about the story right here. So I would always suggest that you create like a kind of personal story right here and not something with AI as well. And I would avoid like childish things like this uh, and make it more like professional hiking website, right? So uh, I would change that for now here as well to make it a bit more professional. Uh, and also here I see that they just have one product for ladies and one product for gentlemen, right? But to call something a category in the eyes of Google, it's more like five products or more, right? So that's very important to realize when it comes down to categories uh, and dividing the products in there. So when we scroll down, we see that they have some blog article, why walking shoes are a good choice. That's always pretty decent. But this homepage seems a little bit uh, empty. I would give it some more body with some more nice images, some benefits of these shoes some features of ordering from you, let's say for example, free shipping or something like that. As of for now, it's pretty empty. Uh, so that's definitely something they can improve as well. Uh, so uh, then we go down to the step number two, and that is actually the footer. Uh, so we see in the footer that they uh, implemented one of the templates that I provide in my premium framework. Uh, and that is stated how you should write your business information. So there they did a really solid job. Uh, so you see here the business name is Your Footwear, uh, but actually I see that the website name is Dine Shoe Work. So uh, I think the business name should be Dine Shoe Work right here. Uh, so that definitely needs a checkup as well from the owner of this website. Uh, also we see that they implement the company name, uh, the business address which is all fine, the company number and then the stock address. I don't really recommend to put the stock address right here. Uh, as of you have two addresses right now, so maybe merchant centers like confuse which address they need to take. So I would remove the stock address right here as it's not that relevant as the business information itself on this location. Uh, then I see that they did a good job with the, providing the email address uh, and the phone number, right? Make sure that if you mention a phone number, it's always working because I think Google Merchant Center has a few tools to see if your uh, phone number is actually functioning. So make sure to implement that in uh, your account as well. And also here I see the policy pages. Uh, as this is a German website, I translate it into uh, English, right? Because I'm from Holland, I cannot speak German. So, and therefore we are going over this English website. So I see they have like an imprint or an impression with business details. Uh, they have the privacy policy, terms and conditions, uh, return uh, policy, the shipping policy and the payment options. So that's all complete uh, as of for now. And then here under more links, they have an about us, contact, FAQ page and track your order. So that all will do the job. Uh, then we definitely need to scan if the right information is at the right time. So here we are in their merchant center account. 
So the first thing I always check is the business information, right? Because it should match with the information they provide on the website. So here you see they uh, say display name, uh, the website name, right? But as of the first screenshot here, we saw something else. So that's definitely needs a checkup, right? Uh, then I see the street and everything uh, is according the same information as outlined right here. So that's really good. I see that they verified the phone number, which is really important. Uh, and then they provided the customer service contact options. So that's all really good as of for now. And what is also really important to mention is that your Merchant Center account should display your live website, how it is at the current moment with your policy pages and your products, right? Uh, because here on the homepage from the Merchant Center account from this website, we see a pretty strange graph, especially in the shopping ads right here. Uh, so they are adding a bunch of products in the beginning. Then they get all disapproved, then they get all approved with over 1000 variants and then suddenly they are all deleted, right? So it's super important before you want to uh, solve the misrepresentation error that your website is 100% how it is uh, and how it's want to be uh, advertised on the Google Ads, right? So if you keep adding and deleting different products, it's not a solid base to unlock your account from the Merchant Center misrepresentation error. And because if you are going to the website here on the homepage, and we scroll down to the products right here, we see literally two products, right? Two options, like a pink one and a black one with a few different sizes. So I don't think these are like 1000 uh, variations, right? So it's important then to just synchronize all the variations you have right now and just start unboxing your Merchant Center account uh, as well. So let's go over to the next step. Uh, so then the next step is actually to go to the different policy pages, right? So let me go over to the shipping and delivery uh, template. So we see here that they provide the policy for shipping and delivery. Uh, they tell, told us the updated time, so that's really good. They ship to Germany as well, and they do free shipping for all orders, which is really important to understand and to remember. Then they have one to two processing days uh, from Monday to Friday. Uh, the cutoff time is like 3 p.m. on Berlin time, uh, and also the shipping time uh, should be three to five days, right? So let me check in the Merchant Center if that's stated the same way. So then we go over the gear icon right here and to shipping and returns. And if you have the Merchant Center next, uh, you can always press the question mark and go back to the classic one as of this one works uh, more easier for me. So then you go over to the shipping details right here. So I want to see if they state the same details uh, as they mentioned in the website. So we see here 3 p.m. cutoff time, Berlin time, which is really good. One to two day uh, order handling time and three to five days shipping time. So this is all pretty solid. I can press next and I can go out of this uh, menu right here. Uh, then we go over again to this menu and then we go to returns. And when we are in the returns, we need to see how many days they uh, mention on the website for the returns and how many days they tell, told us in the Merchant Center, right? So we see here that their policy is already verified, which is really solid. Uh, they mentioned 30 days. So if we go here to the refund policy, you see also 30 days from the moment that the order has been delivered. So that's all super good. Uh, it's all matching and synchronized with the Merch Center and even verified already. So that gives you kind of more a solid base to get your account unblocked as well. If you find this video really helpful, then I'm 100% sure that my premium Merchant Center unblocking framework is exactly for you. It helps you step by step by providing all the information you need to know to unblock your Merchant Center from the misrep presentation error. Make sure to click the link in the description so you can start with unblocking your Merchant Center today. All right, let's continue with the live audit. Uh, then we go over the payment options. Uh, as these ones should match uh, the options in the checkout, right? So it's really important to see, okay, they're offering American Express, Apple Pay, Google Pay, MasterCard, PayPal, and Visa, uh, and they implemented their business details, which is also highly recommended in my premium framework as well. Uh, so then you need to check if uh, the options you mentioned in the payment options are uh, in the checkout as well. So here we see PayPal and Google Pay. Then we scroll down, we see Visa, MasterCard and Amex and PayPal again. So I think you can remove this one as not many people are using it and PayPal has mentioned it two times. So it might be easier to just leave it right here so people fill in the information at first, right? So that's really important to mention in checkout. And what's also really important to mention are the details right here. So all the policy pages you have on your website 
should be implemented in your checkout as well. So that's definitely one thing that a lot of people are forgetting in Shopify, right? And then the super important thing is also uh, the product page, right? All right, and there we are on the product page here. Uh, we see that they just have a bunch of photos from this product, like two photos from each product. You definitely need to add more. Uh, in terms for the merchant center, you need to have more a solid base of what you're advertising on, uh, as well as for your conversion rate, right? Because we don't need to uh, forget that you need to have a good conversion rate in order to make your Google Ads profitable. So it's very important that you realize that you give the uh, customer as much information as possible uh, before they actually buy from you, right? So it's super important to have more images than just this one, because also if you reply uh, for a review in the merchant center account, there's actually an employee of the merchant center going through your website. And if they only see two images, they think, mm, nah, it is not solid enough to be advertised on uh, Google Ads, right? So make sure to have at least four, five, six images from one uh, product, right? From all sides, maybe with a model and a sizing guide, something like that. Uh, so here I see also another shoe, uh, the blue shoe. The photo quality is very good. And you also need to have a wide background right here for the Google Shopping. So that's pretty solid right now, but I definitely would add some more products in here as well. Uh, we see that they have the sizing drop down menu here, which is solid, the amount, all is working here, so that's good. Oh, when I scroll down here, I just see a very like thin product description. This definitely also needs some more body, just like the homepage as well. So definitely give that a checkup as well with more information about what kind of quality are these shoes, maybe where are they made, what is the guarantee, things like that, right? So give the a potential customer as much information as possible and so the uh, Google Merchant Center employee. So then I always test as well like uh, the cart page because this is also a very important step for Merchant Center in the funnel, right? Not only the checkout or the uh, product page, also the cart page. So we see here that they have slide cart, uh, all is solid. You can add the payment icons right here as well if you want to have some extra trust and, and even a conversion booster as well. So that's very important. Then we go to the track your order page to see if everything is all right there. Uh, everything seems well and working right here. So that's really good. Then we go to the FAQ to see if all information, uh, what they mention in the policies is exactly the same as mentioned in the merchant center and in the FAQ, right? So we see here again, a uh, one to two day processing time and the shipping three to five day, exactly as uh, what we just mentioned as well. And also 13 days, 30 days guarantee as well for the uh, returns. So that's pretty solid. Again, the company uh, email address right here, the payment methods. So everything seems very well here uh, written down. So here I don't really have much uh, recommendations yet. Uh, we can go to the About Us page to also see what is going on there, right? Because if you're like a solid brand or you want to promote something uh, for your dropship store, you need to have a good story, right? To build some trust, not only for Merchant Center as well as for your potential clients. So make sure to explain something about yourself, the process right here. How did you create this website and where it came from, right? Like what is your kind of mission and vision with this kind of products? Uh, so you can use AI for that, but let it not sound really like a robot. Uh, make sure to have it like a human touch, right? So here all is good. They add the company uh, information as well. Uh, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. So that's all pretty solid for now. Uh, so yeah, then we go over the contact page, which is one of the most important pages of the website. So we see that all important information is mentioned here as well, right? So you should mention at least your business information and other ways how people can contact you as well as in the contact form, right? So make sure to check uh, as well as that this is functioning properly, right? Because the Merge Center has few tools to see uh, what I said before, if your phone number is working, as well as uh, your email address and your contact form. So double check that all is working right here as well. Uh, it's always good to build trust for the merchant sample employee and mention more things um, on your contact page as well, such as uh, your uh, frequently asked questions, uh, if you have complaints, if you have returns, things like that. So you can also link to the pages right here to make some extra trust right here. And then one other extra bonus thing, which is really important nowadays, is to check for broken links. Uh, to save you time, I already checked this website and I don't see any broken links, which is really good. But if you have broken links right here, guys, make sure to fix them as Google wants the best experience for the people that they guide from the Google platform to your website, right? 
And if you convert this visitor into a customer, you're also going to spend more on Google Ads. So therefore they highly benefit and value a good working website. So if you have any broken links on your website, you should 100% fix that at any time. And I would also recommend to even check it every week or every two weeks uh, to be 100% proactive and on it, right? So these are very important things you need to check uh, when it comes down to the Merchant Center misrep presentation error. If this information is helpful for unblocking your Merchant Center, I'm 100% sure that my premium framework, which is going to guide you step by step for unblocking your Merchant Center, is going to be really helpful for you. Make sure to click the link in the description so you can start unblocking your account literally from today. It has been proven to work for more than 300 merchant centers before yours. But even if you followed all steps from this video, there's still a small chance that your merchant center will not be unblocked because every website is slightly different from another one. So therefore, all fixes that need to be implemented and found and fixed uh, are slightly different from each other, right? So if you are ready to take action today, I will implement the link to my premium framework in the description so you can literally start unblocking your merchant center right from today and take action. But if you are not ready for whatever reason yet, I will implement another video about the merchant center so you can even benefit for more free information from my side and give you insights how you can find and fix potential issues for your merchant center. I see you on the winning side.